Conclusion In the remote past, after innumerable cycles, our universe came into being. A universal field of energy filled the cosmos, and the particles of that energy were consciousness itself. The particles were connected to each other by the attraction of unconditional love, and they were self-aware. Each little particle, an I am, or intelligence, that would mature with other intelligences to make units. Their various combinations made up the elements. They progressed through countless lives of being brought together as one element, and then disassembled and reassembled as a different one. In this way, consciousness, or spirit, created the known universe. Throughout its various lives, an intelligence will be an electron or a proton in the atoms of the elements, be they solid, liquid, or gaseous. Once this is mastered, the intelligence can control more. It will control entire atoms, then molecules. When molecules transition from one state to another, it is the death and rebirth of a maturing spirit. The next step is single-celled organisms, such as bacteria. As an individual consciousness matures, it will possess groups of cells that have crystallized into minerals and plants. After mastering minerals and plants, a consciousness can learn to control an animal body, such as a human, that is home to trillions of smaller life forms of less developed consciousness. We become the God and universe to these life forms. After gaining all the experience necessary, and as consciousness expands, it can become the life of a lake or a river that is home to various water animals, or a hillside in which land creatures reside. A consciousness can grow to govern an entire planet as the soul of Earth that is home to us humans and our fellow Earthlings. Thus there are consciousnesses within consciousnesses that are all connected by a unified field of consciousness. Lifespan is proportional to size. The average lifespan of a fruit fly is one day. A house cat can live 20 years. The human average is 80 years. A tree can live hundreds to thousands of years. A lake can exist for 10,000 years. The Himalayas were formed 50 million years ago, and the Earth itself was born 4.5 billion years ago. Consciousness continues to progress from planets to stars to star systems to galaxies to what is called the universe and beyond ad infinitum. Humanity on a more relevant note for our current consciousness as human beings, let's turn our attention to the groups of Homo sapiens, wise humans, that appeared on Earth 300,000 years ago. We are called sapiens, or wise, because we use our brains to make tools and machines. But tools were used in Europe 1.6 million years ago, and in Kenya over 3 million years ago. That is before the so-called Homo erectus, standing human. Homo heidelbergensis were humans that lived on Earth from 700,000 to 300,000 years ago. Although the Homo heidelbergensis civilization ended around the beginning of the Homo sapien civilization, there is no current linking of the two in the fossil record. Another group of humans called Neanderthals lived on Earth from around 300,000 to 40,000 years ago. Upon discovering their existence, Scientists thought that they must have been stupid cave dwellers, and that they could not mate with modern humans. But more recent discoveries are showing that most of us have Neanderthal DNA, and that they were quite smart. The various cycles of humans on Earth can be synchronized with the generations of the gods spoken of in world myths. The succession of rule went from Uranus to Cronus and the Titans. It was then taken over by Zeus and the Olympians. The gods shared the earth with modern man for a time, but then they left. Our ancestors saw Homo neanderthalensis, and they thought of them as giants or gods. Today, there is little left of these prior civilizations. But let's look at the fragility of our own civilization. We have gone to the moon and are preparing to go to Mars. 
We also have cities with large buildings, cars, and computers. But if we just up and left the Earth today, it would only take a hundred years for plastics and rubber to disintegrate, and just five hundred years for metal to rust away. In less than a thousand years, the only evidence of human life would be things made out of stone. And that is exactly what we find left from all previous human civilizations. Large stone structures, stone tools, and pottery. Humans were not in a stone age for millions of years. In fact, they had just finished a golden age before leaving us to begin our learning of stoneworking and metalworking. The Copper Age, also called the Chalcolithic Period, began around 6,000 years ago. And world religions teach us that it was the gods that came from the skies and taught us these skills after the last worldwide catastrophe. The last advanced civilization of Earth fled the catastrophe. Some headed for the skies, and some went beneath the Earth and seas. The genetically altered worker humans that survived the destruction landed their boats on the various continents and began the rebirth of civilization. Without the technology of the gods, and a way to stay globally connected, things like language changed rapidly. Many ideas that were thought to be important became the sacred wisdom only passed on by the elders to their pupils. Before the cataclysm, holistic medicine was used, dark matter was understood, and the unifying energy of the cosmos was more than a theory. The world religion after the flood was thus what we would call shamanism. All of the ancient indigenous cultures knew that a unifying life force permeates everything and that there is more to our surroundings than what we can see and hear. They knew how to access other energies. They revered their ancestors and their creators and the life force that is in all things. Creation is cyclical. We have global warming and cooling as the earth goes in and out of ice ages. We see the rise and fall of great civilizations, death and rebirth of life forms on our planet and of the cosmos themselves. The gods that created this cycle of humanity took the place of previous creators. They are the same pantheon that is seen worldwide in the myths and religious teachings. The wisdom of the gods was passed on to modern humans through contact during the Golden Age and from visits made by the gods from time to time. Shamanism is a remnant of Atlantean spiritualism. Modern religions, priesthoods, and mystery schools sprang from the ancient wisdom and by gods that visited humans and influenced the mode of worship. As science advances, we are confirming what the sages have been teaching for millennia. We are becoming gods and creators, and we have many great things yet to experience as humanoids before we move on to other forms of being. Animism and Paranormal Activity Because of the collective consciousness, which includes the unseen energies, humans can achieve things that modern science has not yet mastered. We can use thought and prayer to actuate tangible change in the world. We can remote view, communicate telepathically, levitate objects, remember past lives, and talk with interdimensional beings. We can use the mind to heal ourselves and others. We see the eternal nature of energy and matter. We know that we continue to exist after the body dies. We can love others as ourselves because we know that they are parts of the same whole. Unity In this book we have seen the similarities between the various creation myths, pantheons, religious teachings, symbols and rituals. We see the interconnectedness of humanity and of all life. We have every reason to come together and love each other regardless of any superficial differences. I recall a time in my adolescence when my parents, who loved each other and did a great job raising their children, were in an argument over something trivial like money. I entered the room and told them to grow up. That is my advice to warring nations that fight over boundaries and things. It is my advice to religions that claim they are right and others are wrong. It is my advice to the gods that war against each other. The inner earth gods who care about the earth and us humans that dwell on the surface, have been at odds with the sky gods that won the war in heaven. 
Both the extraterrestrials and the intraterrestrials have advanced technologies and anti-gravity flying craft. Yet, with all their advancement, they haven't gotten beyond the childish bickering over what belongs to who. They should understand the universal law that all is one, and that what you do will come back to you. We should do to others what we would want done to us. We should act in love. As seekers of wisdom, we should all love ourselves as ever-growing divine beings and, in love, treat all other humans, animals, and the earth as we would want to be treated. Know that any religion can be beneficial and that no single religion is necessary for spiritual growth. Live a holistic life that includes a plant-based diet, periodic fasting, plenty of water, sunlight, exercise, laughter, music, art, meditation, connecting with others, union with a partner, expressing gratitude, honest work, and rest. Know the divine source of light, love, and energy that makes up the universe, and call on the source by any name we want. Do our best to progress each life, and when we graduate from this state, continue progressing eternally. Know that we are parts of the oneness, each perfect in our progression, and equal in value, regardless of race, gender, size, sexuality, creed, political views, titles, socioeconomic status, or age. Look for truth wherever it can be found, and disregard the falsehoods that get mixed in. Also, prefer study over mind-altering substances for enlightenment. Understand that the gods, angels, or demons that descend from the heavens are by definition extraterrestrials. Understand the law of karma and live accordingly. Use visualization, mantras, yogic postures, and other techniques in order to tap into cosmic energy for the purpose of uniting humanity in love and happiness.